another episode in our Creative Book Club series. Um, today, I am going to be sharing with you some of my favorite vintage craft books for kids and adults. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things to talk about because I'm sort of obsessed with vintage books. I often, go when I go to like an old bookstore, that's the section that I comb through. If I go to garage sales, I'll look there. Um, so I'm always on the lookout, namely because I think there's a lot of, I mean, obviously there's tons of ideas out there, but some of the vintage ones, there's just some really quirky things that uh, used to be more common that we sort of have lost sight of in our Pinterest age of, you know, perfect um, projects. So I really love these books for the uh, a walk down memory lane when maybe things were a little simpler. Now, I grew up in the 70s, so one of the things that I do adore is that all these books um, are pretty much from the 70s and 80s, uh, and it reminds me a lot of my childhood and the things that I used to like. So that may be another reason for my sort of obsession with vintage books, but there you have it. All right, so I've got three that I want to share with you guys today. Um, most of them are not available in on Amazon this one is the first one is uh, because they are vintage a lot of them are out of print so you're gonna have to look online Amazon does have some used books eBay does have used books so if you like any of the titles that I'm sharing with you today feel free to go ahead and um, do a Google search for some of these and you'll probably be able to find them online okay so the first one is the best of making things this is my favorite favorite book of all time when it comes to craft books um, this is actually a reprinted version. The original version looks like this, and it was it's all hand illustrated and hand written. Um, something I love about it. So it has a very uh, DIY feel throughout. Um, when they reprinted it, I think this came in two volumes. I only have volume two. They made it into a smaller version. It has the same style, same handwritten text. Um, same hand illustrations. It's just, it's a really fun book. This is, this is the kind of book that makes you want to pull out your journal, start drawing, start sketching ideas, and then start making stuff. Now, this book is probably best for, I would say, older children to uh, adults. There are a few things in here for younger kids, but generally for little ones, this is not your book because a lot of the projects do involve some more complicated material, not materials, but um, process processes. Um, this book, one of the things I love about it is a lot of the things are based on, uh, recycled materials. So they have like a whole paper making thing and different things you could use to make paper, a bunch of recycled ideas like lint. Have you ever thought of using laundry lint, um, to make paper? Apparently you can. Um, they have a lot of paper projects. Uh, I love these paper mobiles. Most of the stuff in here is pretty accessible. You won't have to search too hard for any of the materials, which is another reason I love it. I'm always on the lookout for project ideas that aren't complicated or don't require you to go buy 10 things. Um, they also have some fun, like, super 70s stuff in here, like, uh, where's the one I love? The bread sculptures. Okay, peaceable bread. I love this. Now, I have never thought about doing this, but apparently this was maybe a thing. Um, you know, you would basically make bread dough and then you roll it up and shape it into different sculptures. Then you bake it and eat it. So this one was the, I, this shows you how to make a, a bread lion. So they have all the, that, you know, that type of thing in here. Some, some old school projects that you'll probably get a kick out of. Um, so this is a really fun one. If you have younger kids, uh, this is another favorite of mine, The Playbook. This is by Stephen Canney. He wrote uh, several books. He's a kind of prolific craft and activity author of the 70s and 80s. Um, his books, I love, I love this. I love all the uh, pictures he has of the 70s kids um, doing their thing. His books really spoke to me because they encourage you know, parents and children to be makers. They encourage exploration. He encourages a mess, um, something that I am a big, big proponent of, despite my husband's <laughs> trepidation. Um, I let my kids make a mess because I think it's part of the, the uh, what they need to, you know, 
to be able to explore their ideas. Sometimes we're going to make a mess. I make a mess. Let them make the mess. Don't let that stop your, your kids. You know, don't let your own fear of having a messy house or a mess on your hands to clean up stop you from letting your kids try something new that they may love and enjoy. Um, one of my favorite projects from this is called Room Weaving. So the idea that you would give your kids ribbons and string and let them make a giant spider web in their bedroom. We've done this and my kids loved it. Uh, one of the things I like about his books, um, Salt Garden, he's got a lot of DIY toys, uh, Paddle Block Boat. There's some dated stuff in here, like the Animal Trap. I don't think we would do that today. <laughs> um, but it, Knitting Frame, really cute stuff. And what I like about it at the end is he has suggested minimum ages. So he has a column for playing. So if you have younger kids, they might be able to make something, but they may be able to play with it. If you have older kids, you know, when they could make it, comfortably make that project. Um, he also has a couple things, like if you need a quick project, um, a couple different categories of things. It's a really fun book, and it's, it's organized very well. So this would be a fun one to look for. Um, I think I did get this on Amazon used, um, but again, you'll have to look for this on vintage uh, sites because it's not in print today. And my last book, my last book is Don't Move the Muffin Tins. This is by Bev Voss, who was a preschool teacher in the uh, Sacramento area of California. Um, and she's influenced a lot of preschool teachers and programs. I know my friend, uh, my friend's daughter goes to a school that's based on her sort of philosophy. And basically her philosophy is that um, it's process oriented. I, I think this was the first book I read where I really understood why we need to give kids room to make and let process be the most important thing, not the product. Um, you know, it's, before I read this book, actually, I was much more inclined to say, oh, you know, when you're doing a project with the kids, no, 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 don't do that, do this, or to guide them at every step of the way. This book really changed my entire mindset about that, and I think that it will do the same for you. It's not set up, it's really set up as an art book um, showing, you know, preschool teachers how to, you know, project ideas, how to work with different materials, how to set things up. Um, but in general, what you get from it is, I love that she's got like her preschool room layout. Um, uh, what you get, what you really get out of this is a change in your whole mindset about working with kids and how important it is to nurture their own creativity and how that, how you can actually, um, I don't want to say do harm, but how you can impede on that creative process if you are standing over them all the time. So Don't Move the Muffin Tins is a, is a response, um, is actually a quote taken from one of her projects, but I think it's a larger metaphor for parents and adults setting a scene for a child, for instance, you know, setting up an art table and then backing away and letting them do what they want to do and giving them space to do it. Um, and, you know, really for parents to stop thinking so much about, oh, I need to give my kids, you know, something nice to put on the wall. I want them to be able to take this home to a parent. No, no, no. What's really important about the creative process is that they are learning and exploring and they have room to do that. So you focus a lot less on the product and you focus mostly on the process. So that this was sort of a life changing book for me. Again, I think I bought this on Amazon Used. Um, I'll have some links below in the description, but you may have to search this out online or in uh, a vintage store to find it. All right, well, that's it for today's episode. I will be back next week where I will be exploring some of my favorite science books for kids. Thank you.